Today we are going to walk through a demonstration of NICE's IVR optimization product. What you're seeing here on the first initial screen uh, is our first view, our overview visualization of the um, IVR menus that your customers walk through within your IVR. I will orient you a little bit to what you're seeing here, and then we'll dive into some uh, scenarios and some analysis. So to begin with, these blue boxes that you'd see on the screen here are the customer facing menus or nodes, as we refer to them sometimes. Um, the nodes are connected by these gray lines, which the thickness of the lines is representative of the relative amount of traffic between the individual nodes. So if you wanted to follow the most common path, you could uh, follow along with the thickness of the lines and see where your journey is. Um, take you. Uh, I will zoom out a little bit here so you can get a sense for how many journeys there typically um, can show within an IVR. We only by default show the top 30 journeys just because otherwise it would get too busy, um, which is what these gray boxes are for. They contain the journeys from you know, 31 and above, and that is a flexible number. So if you want to see the top 100 journeys or the top five journeys, um, you have the ability to do that. Um, here you can get a sense for you know, all the complexity that's involved within your IVR with different paths that it can take, different starting points, um, et cetera. Um, over here on the left, we've got some kind of basic filtering options. Uh, you can see that um, we can choose a particular date range that we would like to visualize. Um, we can change the um, nodes that we want to either start with or include, and I'll show you an example of that a little bit later. Uh, here's this top 30 journeys button that we talked about um, just a second ago. And we could also apply any particular piece of metadata to our filtering that we'd want to if it were relevant. So um, by metadata, I mean any particular piece of information relative to the customer, um, the customer demographics, the product type that they're calling about, the product type that they own, um, maybe their uh, customer seniority, their tenure with the company, um, or even an NPS score. So if I wanted to see the um, IVR journeys of detractors versus promoters, um, any of that, I could come in here and filter on any of this particular information as well. So again, to begin with, what we're starting with is a dynamic visualization of, of the actual paths that are going through <clears throat> your IVR. And uh, you may have an idea of where you want to go and investigate a particular menu that you think might be a little bit problematic. Um, but if we didn't know that, we might just refer to maybe one of our dashboards, and I'll pop in one of them here, to get a sense for if there's any problem areas in the IVR that I, as an analyst, may need to go in and investigate. So as I see our executive dashboard loading here, I can start to see that um, some of our numbers that we're measuring and can publish within the IVR, such as you know, authentication or containment, um, are, are perhaps maybe not where we'd like them to be. Right? So for example, here we have um, a containment rate that's registering um, relatively low in the 15% area. Um, our authentication rate is also I mean, not where the company wants it to be, around 40%. Um, I can see the amount of time that my customers are spending in the IVR. Um, that one looks okay. That looks like to be within range. Um, but this will give me a sense for maybe I want to understand, um, you know, give me something to go investigate within, um, within this tool. So to start, let's pick the containment rate because this is clearly one of the lower um, pieces, one of the lower numbers that we're seeing uh, in our executive dashboard. So we can go back to our um, overview here, and this is just a, a menu of some saved uh, queries that I have. And if we go back to the main menu, I can start to um, define a scenario that I would like to investigate. And containment, as we know, is, is typically defined as calls that are um, routed to an agent, something that's not able to be self-served or completed within an IVR, um, and it means that the call is typically going to an agent, which, as you know, is a very expensive option. So what I've populated down here is our Scenario Analyzer. Scenario Analyzer is an interactive tool that allows me to uh, drag and drop particular menus that I want to investigate um, a little bit more about. So to start, I'm going to 
we just pick our, our starting menu here, which is this welcome main announcement. This is the one that I'm mostly interested in um, as my starting point. So I'm going to drag that down. And I'm going to add a second node, which is because we're interested in containment, I found an exit transfer to agent node that I'm going to drag down here. And I'm going to calculate that scenario, which means I'm going to filter down my data into just those IVR journeys that involve this as a particular starting point and that are going out to an agent. And so I can see that, for example, within the scenario that I've defined, my um, transfer to agent rate is about 62%. So it's definitely um, on the high side, right, which is reflective of our containment rate we were measuring in the other, in the, on the dashboard. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to dive down into our um, next layer down, which is our interactive um, IVR analytics, our advanced analytics layer. So there's a few tabs on this page that I'll explain. Um, for example, the first one here is our journey analysis. This one is showing me our top journeys within the scenario that I've defined. So for example, we can see that, um, you know, these are the exact journeys that our customers have in common ranked by volume. So for example, someone's coming in and hearing the announcement, they're hearing a thank you message, um, maybe they're getting a date of birth capture here, and then they're going to an agent. You can see some other, other um, journeys that involve similar menus where they're seeing, you know, a, another date of birth capture here um, and some other information that they're capturing, but all of these are ending um, it with a transfer to an agent. So this is helpful to see some of this information about what might common journeys are, but to really get a sense for um, the most valuable information, I'm going to switch over to this next tab, which is our menu analysis tab. Um, and if I sort over here by our menu complexity score, I can start to get a sense for which menus, which IVR nodes within my scenario that I've defined are the most complex, which ones are the most troublemakers. Um, so the menu complexity score, just to define it for a moment, is a proprietary score that is calculated um, and it's, it can be weighted um, differently, but it's typically weighted on um, the number of times that um, a customer goes through a particular menu, the number of interactions that it sees. Um, how many times does the customer have to repeat that menu Maybe because they don't understand it? Um, what's the average amount of time that a customer would spend in this menu? Um, and then how many steps does it take them to get there? So we weight all of these different things and we um, put a score to it. And if I rank it by the most complex, I can see here that our date of birth capture node, um, which is probably related to authentication, um, is, is ranked as one of our most complex menu items. So that's definitely something that we want to go investigate a little bit more to figure out what's going on with the date of birth capture node. Um, if I just want to show you one quick thing before we step away and, and dive down into the date of birth capture mode is our menu optimization, um, which is a new interesting tool that we have that can help also evaluate the um, responses that a customer might enter um, when they're prompted with uh, a menu such as you know, press one for technical support, press two for billing, you know, press three to, to um, you know, hear your account balance. Those types of, of numbers can be evaluated for um, how you have them ranked currently and how much time people are spending to get to the menu that they need. And then we can recommend a reorder of those options, which can um, decrease the amount of time that your customers are spending in the IVR, because if they're, if, you know, the majority of your customers are waiting for an option that's fifth or sixth or seventh down the line, certainly want to move that to the front because, you know, that will decrease the amount of time. It will also increase, um, improve their customer experience, and it will also decrease the uh, likelihood that they're just going to start pushing zero for, for agent and to opt out of, of the IVR. Um, so that's our new menu optimization feature. Um, if I come back here, remembering that we're going to go take a look at our, our complex um, date of birth capture menu, I'm going to look for that particular node. Um, here in our visualization, and I'll show you that we can change the view around that. Oops, repeat that menu, and we can search. We can search for menus um, in here. If I do date, here I can see here's my date of birth capture menu. I can click this link here that says View Journeys that include this event, and this will switch to um, what we sometimes refer to as our butterfly view. Um, which is going to show me all of the uh, events that happened before going into the particular node that I that I selected, and all of the ones that happened after it. So 
this is a really great way to isolate and focus in on just that particular uh, node that you're interested in. So clearly this is the one that was reported as being complex. Um, so we're going to see what's um, going on with that, not so much before it reaches that particular menu, but what's happening after. So if I just zoom in here so you can see, we can see a, a large amount of traffic is actually going from this menu directly to our transfer to agent node. Um, so that's that's um, you know a pretty high percentage there that's going to be contributing to our, our low containment rate. Um, we can see the next one down here is this date of birth capture error node. So about 21%. Or one in five people are getting this error message after they're trying to enter in their date of birth, um, which is a little suspicious given that you know date of birth is typically something that people know. It should be something that's easy to enter. So that's the piece that I'm going to go investigate um, a little bit more in our scenario analyzer. So instead of our um, welcome and transfer nodes that we had down here, I'm going to drag these two boxes down, our capture node and our error node. And we're going to repeat the same kind of analysis with those two um, with those two nodes to see what we can learn about some of the problematic areas within within this IVR journey. So we can see here, for, um, just as we saw above, about 21% of the people are going directly to this error mes message. Um, we can click in it um, in the same way and drill down into our advanced analytics layer. And this time we're we're not as interested in what's going on in the journey because we can understand certainly that once they get this error message, people are going to an agent, um, another one going to an agent, to an agent, um, some are actually hanging up. Right? So that's probably our expected behavior. Um, but this time, instead of you know looking at this or our menu complexity, we're going to look at our quick insights. And the quick insights is where we analyze those attributes, those filterable pieces that we talked about in the beginning the different pieces of um, call, um, caller metadata, um, call metadata, you know, profile information, anything that we know about the customer that we can analyze to figure out what's contributing to the likelihood of them being in the scenario. Which customer attribute is going to predict them, you know, being in the scenario that I've defined, which in this case is reaching that error message. So we can see all those attributes that are there. Um, dynamically ordered over here on the left, um, and they're ranked by their likelihood to con what they're um, contributing to this particular scenario. So, for example, this first one here that I'm seeing is input mode. That's the one that attribute that's listed at the top of our list, and we can see the values of the input mode over here. We can see, um, for example, two different input modes, which is speech or natural language processing, um, or DTMS which is our touch tone entry of the date of birth. And we can see, um, I'll just explain these different bars to you, that within the scenario that I've defined, which is reaching that error, um, the speech is actually getting an error about 50% of the time when it is in use. And then as opposed to DTMF, which is only getting an error about 7% of the time. So um, this, this is an example from an actual customer um, that we're showing you. And in this case, the customer was able to go in um, and because of discovering this error in this way, um, temporarily turn off their speech option for their date of birth entry, um, clarify any menu instructions on how to speak it, um, how to enter it. Um, because as you know, if somebody's not able to correctly, you know, enter in their birthday or authenticate, uh, that's going to significantly decrease the likelihood that they're going to be able to complete any kind of self-service containment. Um, so, you know, with just really having some insight from our executive dashboard of knowing we should go investigate, um, you know, potentially why there were some containment errors, we were able to drill down into finding, you know, the most complex menu that was maybe the, the, the troublemaker, and then build a scenario around that particular uh, trouble, you know, menu and find out why. And in this case, it was our um, problem with the speech method um, around that particular capture node. Um, finally, I'll show you one last piece with, which integrates into our Nexidia speech analytics, um, which is to say that we can, now that we understand more about the customer um, journey within the IVR, we can extend that um, to our speech analytics and understand a little bit more about what's going on when, um, when our customers are finally reaching an agent. You know, what is it that they're, they're actually talking about? So in this case, um, I can send that saved 
um, set of calls over to our Next Video platform and start to see um, some interesting pieces around that, such as the word cloud about you know what were the caller and the agent talking about, um, or what was the sentiment on those calls, right? So we can start to get a sense here by looking at the word cloud. Um, they were talk talking about things like what well, problem with my birthday, you know, system wouldn't take my birthday, trouble logging in, right? So some things that we would certainly understand um, based on the um, you know the problems with authentication that we saw. But then also we can start to see some of the reasons that they might have been calling in the first place, you know, had a card holder, report a lost card, pay my bill, things that maybe um, could have been solved with self-service. So um, definitely something that, you know, if we can fix this particular problem, we have a very strong um, probability of increasing our, um, you know, containment rate and therefore lowering our costs and also improving our um, customer satisfaction in the meantime. So that is our demonstration of NICE IVR optimization. Thank you very much.